Welcome back to The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. It's one for the ages, the critically acclaimed Broadway musical, Kimberly Akimbo. It's a story of a 16-year-old girl who has a rare and fictional rapid aging disease. Imagine teen angst while living in the body of a 70-year-old woman while also dealing with a dysfunctional family. Here's Beth Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. Pulitzer Prize winning playwright David Lindsay Abair teamed up with Tony Award winning composer Janine Tesori to turn his early play, Kimberly Akimbo, into a musical. This hilarious and heartbreaking work is now playing on Broadway. I went to Lindsay Abair's Brooklyn home to talk to the creators. I saw Kimberly Akimbo when it was off Broadway way back in 2003. What made you two think it should sing? Well, Janine and I worked on Shrek the Musical together and we had uh, a really great time, but there were a lot of people involved. And I said to Janine, I'd love to do this again, but like I write one of my plays where it's just us by ourselves and we can splash around for as long as we need to. And it was Janine's idea. She said, well, what about one of your old plays? And I said, well, what do you mean? And she pulled Kimberly off the shelf. Right off that shelf. Off the shelf over here. She said, I think this, I think this one sings. It has a big heart in it, and I think there might be musical there, and then we started investigating. Janine, you've worked with playwrights before, of course. How do you find your way into a piece that's already written? David is an incredible structuralist, and I I work from chaos, you see my kitchen, and David's kitchen is very orderly and neat. So together, we have a great structure, and there's places where the lines blur. I think we bring that out in each other. I like the way you see the world. I like your point of view. A little sly, a little strange, a little bit askew. Do you find that there are stories that appeal to both of you? that you know you both want to tell? Are there any themes that you're finding in common? The thing that, that I can trace through all of my shows, they tend to be about outsiders who end up in an upside down world and have to find clarity in that crazy world. Ginny and I have very similar senses of humor and sensibilities. I, I grew up working class and, um, you know, really horrible things happened to my family and friends. And we, as the more horrible they were, the funnier they sometimes were, that we used humor as a coping mechanism. I think that's something we have in common. Definitely. David does some um, Three Stooges stuff that to this. I won't make you do it, but Thank it's you. like, la da dee, la da da. It's just like a really silly sense of humor, but also incredibly grounded. One of the actors said it's like the tragedy and comedy that live side by side, they're neighbors. And that's what life is so much of the time, how absurd it is and how beautiful it is. And, you know, when my grandmother, when she was in her late 80s and she would look at the mirror and she would say, God, I'm so surprised I'm not 12. It just really rings to me about how the, we stay the children we were, if we're lucky that we have that sense of play and humor because life is so hard. It's interesting because even with Shrek and of course with Violet for you, Janine, there is this idea of what we're presenting to the world is not how we feel on the inside. And that's obviously part of Kimberly Akimbo where she's a 16 year old girl who looks to the outside world like she's an older woman. So that has her deal with a lot of really heavy issues like you said, David but there is plenty of absurdity. Where did you find that, like the eccentricities? I didn't have to search very far. As a writer, I try to go past the jokes and ask, well, why is it this way? Why do these people deal with things in such a ridiculous over the top way? It's usually grounded in some very deep hurt. That's why I like working with, with Janine. She, she understands that tightrope that, yeah, it's really funny, but also it's sad at the same time. It's amazing just to watch the audience experience Kimberly in that way, that they're laughing and then tears are coming as they're laughing. And uh, that's just a great gift as a writer to see that happen. I wonder what you see when you look at music and how you found the sound for this this play that had no no music before how did you find the sonic world for it one of the ways that I find it, the way into a show is the easiest song the straight AAB song I don't usually st st um, stick to song form I really like going in and out and I think that's one of the reasons that we've worked really well together is there's this idea of what can a song do and when should you stop because your your ear can't take anymore. So it's always easier for me to start with that, that kind of um, simple one and then expand from there. Anagram is my favorite song in there because <laughs> David's a really great 
you know, he is a master of the puzzleistic arts, I would say, and right. Yeah, that Seth character is pretty close to who I was at 16. Yeah. And I'm sure, Janine, that you found things in the play that maybe David hadn't intended or didn't even realize were there. Did that happen? You know, after The Atlantic, we did a page one rewrite. It doesn't mean we rewrote everything, but one of the things that we are deeply invested in is um, looking at work like you didn't write it at all, even when it's successful. And that's really scary because you can break it. Mm -hmm. And so we sat in this room and we started at page one. And I mean, punctuation, stage directions. Stage directions in a play are incredibly important. A lot of people don't read them and they should because they contain the voice of the playwright. They're the playwright in the back of the car going, you want to get off at exit 13 on the, on the, in the Palisades Parkway. And you know, they're, they're whispering in your ear. Look, working with Janine is very different than collaborating with other people because we have such a mutual trust and respect that it, it sort of does feel like I'm working with myself. But instead of arguing with myself, I'm arguing with Janine. And what's best about her is that she doesn't shut down anything. So we, even if an idea doesn't click, this is for both of us. But Janine was right too about saying, we're looking at the work as if it's brand new. I mean, that was what was most exciting for me to re-examine something 20 years later, because whoever I was, 20 years ago, that's who wrote that play. My concerns were whatever they were at the time. I, of course, connected more with the teenage characters. And now, all these years later, I'm a dad with two boys, and I have a different relationship with child and parent stuff. And so I, to reinvestigate it from this new place for me is, is a pretty major thing. But then also to investigate it through, through song changes the play entirely. And that's just the magic of music and what Janine brought to it. It's a completely different animal and it's more dimensional and it's more emotional um, because of what she's brought to it. Well, this brings me to how you two collaborate. What does that look like? So you come up to this room and what happens? Coffee. A lot of coffee. A lot of coffee. Yeah, some coconut snacks. Yes, coconut snacks. Um, Lots of staples. In yeah. fact, if Staples is interested in sponsoring us, Great. we go through every index card, yeah. push pin, yeah. certain kind of pen. Got Office it. supplies are yeah. most important. Now, we talk about a scene a lot and say, where is it musically? Where does the song start? And how does the character change? Or what is revealed? How does it end? And then I go away and write a lyric. I send it to Janine in addition to what I think is the lyric. I will then send her 12 pages of noodles. And so it just goes back and forth in that way that it's, you know, an attempt at a structure, then a whole bunch of messy stuff that she then gives shape to. Writing music is a mystery to me still, but lyrics are harder. They're harder because they have to be inevitable. And we believe in perfect rhymes. I think it's just the school that we're from. And I love an imperfect rhyme and pop rhyming is wonderful, it's not my thing. Sometimes when David will write noodles, it will be pages and pages of thoughts. That, and that it's not the pressure to make a whole stanza mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, can I compare you to a summer's day? It's like, no, it's just like, you know, one little line and I'll think, oh, that's the genesis of something. Let's, let's go there. This If you two were to tap into your 16-year-old selves, what do you think they would be thinking about this musical? <laughs> I mean, I think I would like it for a bunch of reasons, but the main thing is that was my sensibility from when I was four years old. The, that juxtaposition of, 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 oh, it's really horrible and really funny and kind of sad. Um, that was always the work that I was drawn to, and so um, I liked those kind of shows. Those kinds of shows influenced me. Um, Christopher Durang and John Guare and Tina Howe and these brilliant playwrights. I thought, oh, I just want to write like that. I knew from middle school that that's what I wanted to do. So, I mean, it feels like this show is kind of a throwback to those shows that I loved growing up. Agree. I mean, my three sisters and I grew up in a, in a very, um, I would call it a very challenging atmosphere. And, and so our escapes were opening the window and escaping out literally on the roof and jumping to the ground and running away, but, but also through intense humor. I mean, we really wanted to make this show about a teenage girl that was not dying, a girl that was living and trying, was trying desperately to be seen and 
have a happy family and make connections with people and never feel sorry for herself. It's sad because the situation is sad, but Kim never feels sad for herself. She just wants to take action while she has time.